Hello, this is Dr. Mike McKinney and President of Promise Broadcasting Network. And once again, we're glad that you've tuned in to our program today. And as usual, we always try to bring a special guest, someone that we feel you would really enjoy. And it's very interesting. And today I have a very special guest uh, that we're interviewing, and that's Dr. John Felice. And uh, Dr. John, nice to see you, sir. <laughs> And uh, we want to ask Dr. John about his many years of practice as a chiropractor, but he has some tremendous things to share. One of the things is, for those of you that, uh, that I'd like to uh, tell you about, one of the things is that he was uh, in the Navy in World War II. He's a young man still, but he's a World War II guy, and he was in the U.S. Navy, uh, and he was actually in a famous unit called the Armored Guard. And they were a special naval unit, right, John? Mm -hmm. They were a special naval unit aboard a Navy unit gun crew aboard fre a freighter during World War II in the Atlantic. And so, John, you joined the Navy about 1942, is that mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Oh, then what happened then? You go to the train. All right. And then when you come out, we volunteered for the armed guard. Okay. And the reason they volunteered Every time one ship would go out, you get sunk. I see. Uh, and that was, and the ship that I got, I went out, and we were supposed to meet a bunch of ships out in the ocean. Right. But we got lost because it was foggy, and mm -hmm. we turned around and went back to New York. Oh. And many of those ships got sunk. Oh, well, thank God you were able to go back and, well, uh, you know. Believe me, someone was watching over <laughs> I me. believe that, John. So we went out at the William Tillman. This Actually, was, this caricature picture that we see on the wall here, John, I believe they did that yourself. You see this dog? Yes. Oh, for heaven's sakes. He was that long, right? I see. This is a, a caricature of the gun crew. Uh -huh. The Navy gun crew aboard the freighter that you were this telling me. John about. Parker. Okay. And this is me. Right. And I used to do cartoons of a lot of the guys on there. Oh yes, that's so very we interesting. We had fun doing that. Right. And, and all this, these cartoons, they all resemble the guys that I did. Right. <laughs> and you guys actually served in the Atlantic at, yeah. at that time. Uh -huh. And you were in some pretty hot spots with the German U-boats and all well, that. Well, the re we used to go out, we'd meet uh, ships, we'd have a hundred ships in one one deal, oh, and we'd go across a hundred ships. It was a convoy, ships. a convoy. That's right. right. And uh, every once in a while, the submarine would come under. Oh, gosh. But we were pretty lucky because we, we were told not to shoot because oh. if we shot at a submarine, the, the ship next to it probably got all it the bullets. Would be hit, it would be hit, yeah. <laughs> so well, they were dropping depth charges all over the place. Oh, my. Yes. There were a lot of a lot of those. And you mentioned you saw some buzz bombs going overhead one oh, time, too. Oh, that's when I was in... In Belgium? Yeah. Uh, I used to sleep in a, a buzz bomb. You'd hear a buzz bomb oh, gosh. go and stop uh, right it, when it was on top of your head. Yes. And came down. Just came down. And you never knew where it was going to hit. <laughs> oh, boy. And it hit uh, one time a theater, killed nine, nine, oh, 900 of our guys. Wow. My Lord. You just never knew when those buzz bombs, and when that, when they, they, they were me. Uh, yeah. Before they came over, the English uh, used to shoot them down. Oh yes! But every once in a while, they missed. One of them would get through, though. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So that was sort of the the Nazis at the last minute were trying to survive, yeah. and so they fired uh, those things in England. I see. Uh, and were you in the Channel at that time, the English Channel? Uh, um, almost into the city, not quite. Well, okay. We parked outside the city. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. And he we said, he see said he all these buzz bombs coming in. Yeah. And uh, quite a few would come well, in. Well, you guys could have been hit any time on that ship. Any time. Jeez. Mm -hmm. And um, they, they didn't worry you because you couldn't do anything about it. No. So, you just sort of had to accept whatever. Yeah. Right? Except when we heard of that one theater got 
it killed 900 guys. Right. That was very bad. That was a bad, bad scene. So you served aboard these freighters with the naval gun crew throughout the war then. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, I was on three ships. Okay. And uh, I know one of them you said was the Penelope. That was one. One of them. One of them, yeah. Where I went to South America with them. Okay. Uh, but you guys did protect the convoys. That was your assignment. That was yeah. our assignment. Your mission, well, yeah. We never got much of a chance to do that because <clears throat> there were so many ships mm -hmm. with us. Yeah. So they didn't even, even train us. They trained us once. Yeah. But they never trained us, you know, if... Well, Something actually happened. Actually happened. Yeah. Yeah. So I I'm would, sure you would have done okay if something had I happened. Was, I was on a 20 millimeter. Oh my God, that's a good size gun. But I never got the chance to shoot it. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank God you didn't have to shoot it. But so, the, yeah. The one time I went uh, ashore in Belgium, yes, I had um, pea coat and I had. Uh, uh, Cigarettes here. I never smoked, mm -hmm. so I saved my cigarettes. Mm -hmm. I have a package of cigarettes here, package of cigarettes here, package of cigarettes here, here, <laughs> every <laughs> level here. And, and I went through, through the, the thing. The guy looked at me kind of funny, but he let me go through. In the customs area there. Yeah, right? and yeah. that's where I made some money. I see. A little <laughs> contraband, no doubt. <laughs> I see. Well, you must have, uh, although it was kind of scary at times, did you enjoy it, would you say, in, in, in the traveling part? And well, enjoy it. Yeah. I was pretty lucky, I'd say. Okay. Pretty lucky. Because uh, a bunch of us guys got together that weren't in, that they, they had such horrible yeah. things happen to them. Mm -hmm. I was very, very lucky. Yeah, you, you survived and you were spared a lot of stuff, right? Yeah. Uh, well, not really. I never was. The guys that were scared, we used to get guys that came aboard yeah. from the sunken ship. Mm. Oh, they would have like a traumatic and, experience like that. They would hear a, a noise or yeah. a gunfire. They run like crazy, oh, get under the bed. Yeah. That, that was horrible. Very sad. Yeah, very very sad. Well, I'm glad you didn't have to have that go through I, that. I was lucky all the way through my. Mm -hmm. That's right. You made it all through the war. I, yeah, I was lucky all through the war, and uh, I was lucky I didn't get shot. Right. But I was in the right place. You know? That's right. So. Yeah, and actually now uh, are 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 a lot of, are some of them still living today? That's the remaining crew. Uh, uh -huh. Do you know? Yeah, we we know that some are gone now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Johnny Parker died. Oh, all those guys probably did. Mm -hmm. Well, you're still here, at not, and you're going to be this year. Well, when you're 92, yeah, a lot of people die. Or <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of them have died. Yeah, that's right. So actually, you're one of the survivors, not only of the war, mm -hmm. but in life itself. Well, yeah, very good. Well, I was lucky because my brother yeah, died I'm earlier. Yes, he did. I remember so, that. Yeah. But he led a rough life. Yes. Uh, as far as my neighbor's concerned, <laughs> we were going to the, for my first ship. Okay. We were driving in the car, and we were looking at all the different ships and we see a beautiful ship, and that's I thought that's where we're going. That's where we went exactly. Yeah. But our ship was behind that oh, one. Oh no! It was an old bucket. An old bucket. How disappointing! The, here's your ship. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Oh. Uh, one time I I uh, was. It's all right. It's only been 75 years ago, you know. Yeah. <laughs> well, I missed the ship. Oh, there's one time you missed it, right? You were well, late. We were, both this guy and I were out. We just stayed too long. We came oh. back. Our ship's gone. Oh, I bet, I bet you were Ooh. panicky at that point. <laughs> we huh? 
Oh my God! Anyway, we found out where the ship went, and we got another uh, little tub that took us to it. Oh, you caught up with it, yeah. right? Oh God! <laughs> did you guys get balled out or anything? Did no, you, you didn't. Uh, I did a couple things aboard ship where it was a new guy named New. Okay. He was sitting in front of me, mm -hmm. and he took out his gun. We were on duty. Okay. And you guys carry sidearms when you were on duty, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And real bullets. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He put the bullet, took the bullet out and put it in a chamber that when the chamber turned... It looked like a revolver, right? It, it would miss. Oh. He, he had it wrong. He, he went the other way. The other way. Oh, no. And he knew guns. He, he knew real guns. Yeah. And he turned to me like this. He, he, he got a bullet, yeah. and he just put it over my head when he shot. Oh, God. <gasps> I said, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> yeah. That was... was, he, was he, he, he probably panicked, yeah, he right? Was, yeah. He was in shock, right? He was in wow. shock. Oh, my God. I bet mean, he apologized all over the place. Uh, he could have killed you, you know. Yeah, easy. Wow. Oh, sure. Did you know that, A lot Corey? of guys got killed on, on duty. Doing silly things yeah. and having accidents. Yeah. What about the time in Argentina doing the handstand on Oh, that? I understand that when you were in, uh, is it, uh, what's the main Buenos city Aires? in Argentina? Buenos Aires. Buenos Aires. Yeah. Buenos ah. Aires. That you did a handstand on top of a building. Is that right? <laughs> no. The cross. The you cross know, of the Jesus. Cross? Yeah. Jesus well, of the Andes. A, uh, a wall around it. Okay. And it's 23 f feet below. And I barely did a handstand. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Was it windy that day? <laughs> I bet the guy saw you were nuts doing that. <laughs> I got a picture of it. Yeah, what if, what if he had made a mistake and, and fell, you know? I don't know. I, for some reason, I liked uh, doing handstands for a pie. <laughs> and then I understand you were in the, you're the one of the first persons aboard any ship that we know of that made your own exercise equipment. The barbells <laughs> and the, is that right? The gym, like gymnastic uh, stuff? The equipment that was aboard ship... I made. Yeah, right, right. That's the reason it was in. <laughs> <laughs> you made it from scratch. Yeah, every time we get on a ship, I, I met the, the guy that would uh, handle wood. Oh, okay. And I would make all kinds of stuff. Like the machinist mate and all uh, something yeah. like that. Yeah. So I see. So you made your own <laughs> equipment aboard the ship. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, I used to do handstands and... Uh, right. Lips. Would you say that you guys on the crew became pretty close friends uh, during that time? Uh, yeah. Uh -huh. uh, well, what happened? You, you get one or two friends. You didn't. Yeah. Not everybody. Yes. Yeah. So some of the guys were too much, and uh, like uh, Johnny and uh, was a, a friend of mine. And, yeah. Uh, I had my book. I could show you. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's so. You had a very interesting life. You're then, then after, then before the war ended, you got married. You got married, right toward the end of the war. Yeah, I yeah. got my while I was in the in the navy. Yes. Ah. So then, you, then you came out to L.A. to get married, right? And then you had to go back. You had to report back. Uh huh. Wow. And. Uh, I think he had a report to his father. Okay. <laughs> yeah. he went, so you went back, back to the base. Back to New York. Back to New York, I see. That's very interesting. And now, but now the, the interesting thing, too, besides you being a survivor of World War II and a veteran, and we know there are not very many left today. A lot of them, we're losing a lot of our World War II guys every, every year. But, uh, but then you had a very interesting life after the military, after the war when you decided to become a chiropractor. Mm -hmm. Now, John, you were working at MGM at that time, mm -hmm. is that right? Mm -hmm. And how did you decide? What caused you to become a chiropractor? There was a guy, a chiropractor at MGM, okay. who I took after. Never talked to him or anything. Yeah. Just I liked what he did, 
and Dad decided to become a chiropractor. I see. You were you working as a young masseur at that time? At, at the... uh, yeah, I was at MGM as a masseur. Okay. And uh, I became a chiropractor. I devoted all my time to becoming a chiropractor, which was almost. Well, Gosh, it took many years to get through those it, courses. It, it was close to four years. Yes. Well, wasn't John yeah, the head time. of his class, too? Yeah, and I understand that you were one of the top graduates of your class at that uh, time. The top. That's what they say. Was. Top uh, of the group. Actually, you were the, you were the top person of the graduating class. You were number one. That's what I heard. Oh. That's wonderful. So I graduated. I remember And when you graduate, yeah. what do you do? <laughs> yes. Tell me. Yeah. They don't teach you any kind of uh, how to run an office or anything. They like teach that. you the profession itself, but not the business or the uh, or the administrative right. end of a exactly. business. Exactly. I see. So what I did, I just reverted back to when I was in the shore. Okay. And I had a table. I would get one patient. And that patient would get me two, two patients. And those got me more patient. I never ever looked for patients. So through referrals, your practice got started. Yeah, that's wonderful. Uh, and then did and you then did you get an office? Your first office after I that? I had an office, but I gave it up. I practiced in my house for a while, and I gave that up. Uh, the thing flourished the way I was doing it. I see. So. And then I all kept of busy. Yes. I kept busy. Uh, I was busy from six o'clock in the morning to six o'clock at night. Wow. wow. And also another very interesting thing: after your years at MGM on the lot, uh, working and also in the exercise room, I understand you were the guy that had to let them in to get uh -huh. to the exercise yeah. room. So uh, you had a, such an interesting life. So then, how in the world did you get? the practice with so many of the movie stars. How in the world did that happen? I don't know, because I had a one fellow that I met in the, where I was working. Yes. After I, I left Hillcrest Country Club. And uh, he recommended a lot of people okay. to me. He, Everybody I got, they recommended people. That's how I, I made a practice. I see. Well, I they never, sure they never were adver advertised. Mm -hmm. They would come to you, basically. They would call me up. Yeah. Uh, one time I, I came to my first patient at six o'clock. There was a patient waiting for me. My gosh, <laughs> you know I understand that Dr. Felice in his career of over, over almost fifty years. Uh, he actually took care of about 90 major stars, directors and producers in Hollywood and most of the major studios. That was part of his practice. And so you've held such an interesting mm -hmm. life. I mean, it's just been... So actually, you gave up your office, you got your chiropractic bench, and I understand you started going to the homes in Beverly Hills of some of the stars. Mm -hmm. How did that happen? I really I don't know. Yeah, she didn't get, she didn't yeah. get broke. Now, that. who was the nicest of the stars that you took care of? This that the nicest personality of the nicest oh, person. Oh, yeah. Yeah. She was real wow. sweet, right? Yeah, wow. I took care of her husband and her. She died since. Yeah, she and was she, a sweetheart. We're very, we're very happy today to have had Dr. John Felice in the studio. We appreciate. Uh, thanks, John. For your wonderful sharing today, yeah. a very interesting life, and actually, you should write a book about his life story. I, uh, I, only in the, I wish I could remember, but I forget so so many well, things. Well, at ninety-two, I think you're doing pretty good. I think it's pretty great. At and uh, ninety-two, yeah, imagine. <laughs> and uh, so he has a, had a wonderful career. Uh, of course, in World War II as a veteran, which we honor today, so many Amer U.S. veterans of World War II are being highly honored at this time in life. But also his work among uh, the movie people in, in his chiropractic practice, not only helping movie stars, but people of every background and culture and every stage in their life who attribute a lot of their health uh, success because of uh, Dr. John's uh, helpful 
uh, helpfulness in their life and his uh, suggestions, ideas, and his chiropractic uh, treatments, which were just outstanding. So again, we want to thank you for tuning in to Promise Broadcasting Network, and we hope to see you next time. This is Dr. Mike McKinney. God bless you real good. Thank <laughs> you.